You're going to want to grab yourself a hot cup of tea for this one, Piglets, because today we're chatting to Emily Holmes, founder of British tea specialists Good and Proper. We were the first project in the UK to be funded on Kickstarter. No one knew what Kickstarter was. In this episode of The Slowdown, we're going to be discussing the highs and lows of running a business, the advice we'd give to our younger selves, and whether, if we had the opportunity, we'd go back and do it all over again. Yeah, so I thought it was just so nice to have the opportunity to chat with someone who's in such a similar boat. I know your business has been around for a bit longer, um, but, you know, just so great to chat. I think, you know, we spend so much time talking with our own respective teams or talking with the board or fundraisers or, you know, whatever it is. Um, it's just so nice to talk with another founder. And yeah, definitely chat about your experience. Definitely, very much look forward to it. I'm sure that's a lot of common ground. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, so maybe you could tell me a bit about like when you first started and what kind of motivated you to start the business in the first place. Sure. Um, so, like many businesses, it was it was sort of born of a personal selfish frustration. Um, uh, I don't drink coffee, which obviously is shock horror for most people. Um, I never did. I my family was drunk lots of tea. And um, I also spent part of my childhood in India, so I had been to tea estates and sort of understood kind of, I guess, the bush to cup okay. journey a little bit more. Um, and I couldn't understand why in the UK kind of going for a coffee with a friend, which was such a kind of ritual, was um, such a sort of lucky experience for a, a tea person. Um, so I was basically just an angry tea drinker <laughs> um, for a while, uh, doing other things and, and actually loving my job. I, I loved what I was doing. I was working in advertising at the time. Um, so there was no kind of, you know, rejection of the sort of corporate world. Um, I just had this itch, um, which I'm sure you can relate to, just kind of kept bugging me. It kept annoying, kept talking yeah. about it. Um, and I actually think it might have been a, a creative director I worked with on a particular campaign at one point, um, really talented South African guy, said, said something along the lines of kind of, you know, basically, chill up and get on with it. Yeah, you could do <laughs> um, yeah. Everyone could talk about a great idea. Yeah. Um, and uh, not that many people go on to do it. And I sort of thought, I'm going to do it then. Yeah. Um, and doing it kind of meant, you know, I wanted to find out what, what a great cup of tea was and, and then create... Um, obviously find great teas but also um, create kind of destination for those tea drinkers to, yeah. to find a great cup of tea and I didn't actually realise how unbelievably exciting the world of tea was going to be it, yeah. was, it was kind of you know I thought it was just going to be I can make much better tea <laughs> um, and uh, you know why are these coffee shops making it so badly um, I actually stumbled across a, a kind of a very exciting yeah. world it's a bit like wine it's really really fascinating and obviously kind of yeah. full of very rich Heritage anyway, so it came from that, and and I, I honestly can't tell you, I can't remember even, which I'm sure must be a sort of weird thing that your mind does. I can't remember the day I walked into my very secure job and said, yeah. actually, do you know what? No thanks. Um, thank you know, I really enjoy it, but I'm actually going to go out on my own and have no salary for a bit, um, and and jump into it. When you started, you know, and you had in mind what you thought the business might be like, what it looked like, or what the process of running the business was like. Never would have done it. Yeah. <laughs> Is this what you pictured? Um, I don't know if I had any idea what I was doing. I, I, I just knew that I really wanted to create something and I knew exactly what it want, I wanted it to be and the experience mm. and how it would feel. And actually one thing, you know, the, we're 10 this year and the wiggly path that we've been on okay. has been so wiggly. Um, but we've le- I wouldn't change any of it and I wouldn't, and, and it's kind of formed where we've got to, but whenever I look back at it, there's, there's sort of definite things that have never deviated, which are kind of exactly what we sort of set out to do. Um, and so I don't know, I don't know, I, I, I'm pretty sure I thought that I'd be, you know, way further along than I was, because everything, <laughs> everything takes so much longer, um, you know, a few pandemics and things in the way. Um, but I don't know, I don't know if I really knew what it meant. Um, and I certainly yeah, I didn't know how all consuming it would be, but also how yeah. amazing that is. I don't know. I don't know. Did you? Yeah, it's it's hard to remember exactly sort of I think that in so many ways I sort of surpassed my dreams of, of what we could do with it and right. so and yeah, and you know, we get to see this like beautiful product range and all these different categories and things. And I think I didn't really had never really pictured that. We started really, really small and it was just like three colours, couple of sizes, do big covers, pillowcases, cases, like really, really tiny. And so that's like really exciting to be able to see how big it's gotten and, you know, have the whole team and 
I don't know so much like in terms of, I think when I started, I think when I look back, I had these ideas about this kind of new generation of business where so much could be automated, so much could be outsourced, it'd be really hands off. You know, by this point, I thought that, you know, I'll just be enjoying it. I'll just be enjoying it. You know, we'll be able to come up with ideas. Choose the colours. Yeah, so it's a lot more hands on than I think. I could imagine back then that I actually think I like that a lot more. Yeah. Um, I think I would want that version of it that, that I could imagine. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think in some ways. You, are you good at um, are you good at looking or looking at now or looking back and thinking, wow, how amazing is that that we're doing this? How amazing is it that we're launching this new range? Because um, I'm really bad at um, you know when someone says kind of like. Well, isn't this, isn't this, yeah, to be so proud, yeah, to be so proud or something like that. And it's a terrible thing that you sort of go, I guess I, I guess I am, yeah, because you're already on to the next thing yeah. and you're already thinking of, you know, all those now moved, exactly. Yeah. And it might not be financial, it might yeah. be just like, yeah, I know, but I want the, you know, the linen to mm-hmm. be like this and I actually I want to take this next step in terms of sustainability. I'm really bad at focusing on all the things I really want to be doing, but I can't do it all fast enough because we haven't got people, yeah. you know, for all of the reasons why we can't progress as fast. Um, as I say, that's not necessarily about the size of the business, but more just like there's so many great things, which yeah. is so motivating and what gets me out of bed in the morning and not sleeping at night because mm-hmm. we're like so excited to do it now. But at the same time, um, it does mean you forget to go. Actually, it's pretty great what yeah. I built already. And like, you know, sort of doing an annual review of thinking like, actually, yeah. I've done quite a lot this year. Just I'm head never, down, hurtling along. Yeah, I'm never, I'm never super satisfied, which I think you probably need to be that way in order to keep yeah. driving things forward. I do find, so I started a business with my mum and she's less involved now, but it does mean that whenever I'm with her, we talk a lot about what the early days were like and that yeah. sort of keeps it really fresh in my mind. And, and are they kind of funny stories of like, do you remember when we used to... Yeah, yeah and, and also just, you know, we used, to have, we used to have like, our, we used to keep the volume on, on Shopify on our phones, so that when an order would come in, it sort of run to the kitchen. Oh, yeah, that and, pin. Yeah. <laughs> and we talk about that all the time. I remember just, yeah, how exciting every single order was. And I think being able to keep that in my mind means so that you know it still feels really exciting today when it's in law room. You know. yeah, so yeah. That, that kind of like creates those sort of you know landmark moments yeah, that you yeah. track of. But I know it is good to have those. We have we have kind of operational versions of those when you go, oh my god, do you remember when we used to do it like this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, they make us all laugh and think thank goodness we've now got this new system or you know because yeah. of course it's very I mean COVID was brilliant for kind of you know sense checking all of your clunky yeah. processes and making sure that you're doing them proficiently but um, you know, you go through all these funny things of, as I say, I remember when we, we, we actually launched um, on Kickstarter and again, I had no expectations of what was going to mm-hmm. happen. Kickstarter was, we were the first project in the UK to be funded on Kickstarter. No one knew oh, what wow. Kickstarter was. No one knew what crowdfunding was. So I was explaining to my fans. Um, someone at work told me about it on Twitter, that it was in the US mm. and it was going to be launching in the UK and I didn't have a plan for how I was going to get the word out. Yeah. I, I just thought... <laughs> Was it was was there few enough projects on Kickstarter that just by being on Kickstarter you would like people would discover it? I know they're not now the because there was none. I was the first day. Yeah. So so they were in the US and people had talked about it. And actually, funnily enough, um, uh, we a guy at work and I um, I used all the creatives at work yeah. before I left. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and he was a very talented developer and digital designer. And we we were basically trying to build, because we've got this, um, I'm sure you've seen the, the 1974 Citroen van. Mm-hmm. And that was the way I was going to start the business. I was going to kind of basically create a tea bar that would be about me getting the brand out there, okay. understanding what teas people liked, and a really tiny menu of teas that we'd sort of painstakingly sourced. And it was kind of, you know, a bit of a road test. And again, I definitely thought I was going to be in the van for like three months. Okay. And I was going to be like <laughs> into like, you know, my first five tea bars. Um, and I was in the van for 365 days. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, we had, we kind of semi-built a sort of crowdfunding platform ourselves with you, which was like, we were going to sell off panels of the van. Okay. And we were like, look, someone could buy like the wheel and someone could buy the wing mirror and, you know, that'd be like 20 quid and then we could raise this... Ten thousand pounds we needed, which was to kind of get the last bit of stuff. I mean, it's all sort of tea. We needed to get everything up. We needed yeah. to get the van. We needed to convert the van into tea bar. Anyway, luckily, just we were sort of getting to the point where we realised I'm not really quite sure how this is actually going to work on the back end. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we were sort of fiddling around with it. And um, and then literally, this guy said, "I've just seen the Kickstarter launching in the UK." Because okay. he told me about it and how it was really taking off in the US. And it came over um, that day. As I said, I literally went and filmed a filmed a film with a friend. Um, luckily, a very talented friend, so it was a great film. And 
put it on there and as I said, none of my friends and family even knew what crowdfunding was. They were like, why would anyone yeah. give you like a fiver to, you know, because it's rewards based as well. There's no act. Okay. okay. So it's literally like, I'll give you a pass Yeah, okay. you know. um, So really alien concept, like why would I give you my money? And um, anyway, we went, we went live and because I got very lucky because the fact that the UK Kickstarter had launched mm -hmm. and it actually launched with quite a lot of um, oh, okay. you know, That's uh, right. gravitas, which I didn't realise was going to happen. And the fact the first project on there was a tea van was obviously hilarious because yeah. it was a US thing coming up in the UK. <laughs> the first project was like, you know, we need to make a better cup of tea. And so I got a lot of eyeballs on it. We ended up on Radio 4's an yeah. A programme, you know, and suddenly everyone was talking about it. And, and luckily everyone sort of said, Teen is rubbish. We love Teen in the UK. We're so bad at it. Um, and anyway, we, we, we then were able to, to kind of get up and running. But um, I can't remember where I was even telling you about this. But, but it was a um, it was that was a kind of real first moment of wow. This kind of slightly run away with me. And yeah. you know, even just that tiny beginning project. You know, suddenly I was having to rope in every favour, every yeah. friend. My dad, I got pictures of my dad with like piles of boxes, taking them back and forth to post office. Yeah. Thousands of people had put money in, and suddenly I had to send them all tea. And I was yeah. packing tea all night, every night, for like five days. And I think I said it will be for Christmas. It's actually only two months away. <laughs> um, so it was, you know, but but they, I hadn't factored in yeah. success with me. But they're such nice memories. Such nice memories. Yeah. Um, and hilarious memories. And actually, as part of our ten years, we I've sort of said I'm going to dig through all the, oh, yeah. the funny albums. But um, but pictures like that of you know my dad up to sort of his. Carrying towers of boxes back and forth in this post office. Yeah, we were just talking about that recently. We were, we were about to hit 100,000 on Instagram and we were saying Amazing. we should do like some kind of like look back thing and we've got nothing. We've got no no photographs, no, oh, like, no. footage. Oh no, you must, you and your mum must have had some pictures. Not really, you know, you're sort of in it. It feels like something you would never want people to see. You know, you're sort of doing things well, in such yeah, an amateur way. They're, they're, they're not like, good photos. <laughs> <laughs> but now you look back and you think, oh, that was so cool and it was sort of. You know, such a good kind of brand story, but at the time you think like, oh, I really want to look professional. No, no, one hundred percent. You're like, this is the like awful tiny backdrop that we're going to look really professional. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, it's true that when you look back, they seem much more powerful than they, yeah. than they are at the time. And you're like, this is can't let anyone ever know that this is what we're really doing behind the scenes, going yeah. back and forth to the post office. Back at yourself throughout the course of the last ten years, are there any points where you thought I shouldn't have done this? Or even at your the lowest moments and the bits that were hard, are you glad that you did it? Um, I don't think I've ever thought I should never have done this, but I've definitely thought hard. Like how how um, what's the right way of explaining it? Kind of can I keep can I keep doing this? Mm -hmm. Have I got enough strength and resilience to kind of keep doing this? You know things like the pandemic, things that are out of your control, which in some ways are easier because. They are out of control, and emotionally, that's a lot easier to deal with. I you're kind of so, like, yeah. if 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 the, pan the global pandemic knocks over my business, what are you going to do? Yeah, um, it's not a personal failure. It's not a personal failure, <laughs> um, and you know, I think it's possibly fair to say that women are worse at kind of you know mm -hmm. giving themselves a hard time about the kind of thing. And certainly, every decision, I really sweat and and worry that it's the right one, and I worry about you know whether we're taking the right steps. So, there have definitely been moments when you think this is hard and how do I know, how do I keep, you know, can I keep believing yeah. that this is the right thing to do? Um, I've never, I've never thought I shouldn't have done this. No. Or what could life have been like if I hadn't done it? Um, there were definitely points when I had, you know, friends who would just take an hour lunch break and go and buy themselves some new shoes and do all these things. <laughs> and I was like, wow, I can't imagine that sort of scenario of just being so relaxed and so sort of di disconnected from yeah. their job that it was just this thing that they took a break from and went back to and, you know, we're all much better at balance now, and you know, I do take lunch breaks now, of course. <laughs> but um, but it was more this sense that you kind of clocked off, and that was yeah. work done. That's just never something. It's never actually something I've aspired to, but it's but it's also not something I've had with the business. You know, you're completely and utterly intertwined. Yeah, you you are one and the same, which I is think, good um, and bad. And like knowing that you've got like a partner, whether that you know partner, family, whoever it is. That are going to put up with you talking about it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know that I think I hadn't totally. Yeah, I hadn't really totally anticipated that like it would be ninety nine percent of my life and ninety nine percent of what I want to talk about. And yeah. Like, yeah. And that, you know, do you have the right people around you who are going to want to go on that journey with you? Because that's going to be you know five, ten, fifteen years of your life, however long. And yeah. 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 And actually, and it's a funny thing as well, because you are, you know, your other half is actually sort of, you know, they're in for the ride. Um, so luckily, hopefully, ours do enjoy the, the, the chat, the non yeah. chat, <laughs> ideating and, you know, permanently kind of mulling over every detail. 
Um, but you know, even the best of friends, you can't expect them to care that much. You know, no. they care and they support at the right moments, but you know, when you go out to dinner with them, they don't want to hear about the business all the time. No. Um, you know, they want an update, and then and then they kind of want to talk about everything else, which is good, very healthy, and good for you. But it's also funny when you're thinking, God, there's this huge thing happening at work. And I'm like, you know, I would say I think I have like an inflated sense of how interesting it is. Well, exactly. I think <laughs> no, so, that's yeah. completely normal. So I'll say I like you know have stuff. I'll meet people through my husband's work or whatever it is. And then I was like, why, why aren't they asking me questions? I've got really interesting things <laughs> yeah. to tell you about. And I think like, yeah, kind of get that sense of perspective that like, this isn't as big a deal for everyone else as it is for you. Yeah, and it's yeah. not as like cool and exciting as it is yeah. for you. Yeah. I'm like not getting so kind of wrapped but up. But isn't that amazing though? Because actually it's incredibly important and this is probably a life lesson beyond just having a business, mm-hmm. but like it's, that's why you've got to do all these things like, you know, going to the public of friends or doing things or going out for dinner and, and doing nice things, you know, are really important. This is obviously not groundbreaking thing to say, but they're really <laughs> important because they actually also remind yourself, you know, talking about someone else's yeah, get out of it is and, yeah. so such a release. It's yeah. so nice to be able to support someone with something that's completely nothing to do with what you're doing. Yeah, it takes you out of yourself. You also realise that like the things you're sweating are really not that important. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's really easy, I think, particularly post pandemic. You know, we've all been so insular and so in our worlds, and whether that's the business or you know, your relationships or, you know, your home life and you kind of really obsess about these things that you're getting wrong in, like, you know, whether it's your, how many days a week you work at home or whatever it might be, yeah. incredibly boring. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, you go out and realise that actually, you know, everyone else has got sort of, you know, a bit of a tricky thing of working out what they should do too and yeah. it's just not that interesting. It's just kind of... It's actually just a work problem. It's, 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 it's <laughs> just an really uninteresting, mundane, boring detail that yeah. one works with in life. Um, so if you were to speak to your younger self or to somebody starting a business now, are there any sort of top pieces of advice that you would give them? Um, I would say take it all, take, take, I mean, sort of what I said earlier, like take it in, i.e., you know, make sure you take stock of each moment. You don't know where it's going to get to, but make sure you enjoy the ride. Yeah. It's very easy not to enjoy the ride as a business owner because you are, as we said, always on to the next. So you forget to take stock and think, yeah. actually, that was really cool. We just did that. Yeah. Like, how cool this was in milestone. How cool that I'm here talking to you. You know, that's great. Um, <laughs> Rather than like, you know, we were in busy days and this is what we're doing, this is what the calendar looks like. You know, think of all the exciting things that are happening. Um, So take it in. um, And and I probably think that if if I was talking to someone starting the business, I think looking back, um, uh, it's really overwhelming the idea of starting a business. You know, and as I said, I talked about it for a really long time before I did it. And and I think part of that is because you, you think there's this like on switch that's like, Right, I'm now running a business. Yeah. And and actually the way that it ended up happening was that I was still in my job mm-hmm. and I the moment it became real and sort of went from a paper scribble to um to a real idea. I love this. We've got a company. They're really enjoying what I'm saying. <laughs> it's so cheering. They're cheering. They're cheering. <laughs> That the moment it becomes real is actually, I think I remember sort of finding a paper cup supplier and and talking, getting samples from different tea estates mm-hmm. from around the world, and 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 really boring everyday tasks were way less overwhelming. So I would just start doing that. I'd, I'd email someone and say, yeah. oh, "Hi, I'm starting a tea business. I was wondering um, if you know I need a business interest." I mean, yeah. really boring things. But suddenly, the sum of all those really tiny transactions, you know, people start applying, and then mm-hmm. you get samples, and then you have to give them an address and. And then, you know, a week or two later, suddenly you're actually running a business and, yeah. and that's it. Rather than this, like, oh, I'm really not to start a business, but, like, I'm just waiting for the right moment. I've got to get it all looking for <laughs> Exactly. Perfect. Like, yeah. I'm just going to, like, wait, I'm going to plan it all to the nth degree, and then one day I'm just going to go, bing, yeah. running a business. Whereas, actually, it's just kind of, you know, it, and then it gets momentum, and the momentum carries you along, yeah. rather than it being this, like, big, scary leap, which is terrifying. Mm. I mean, terrifying if we thought, today, you're going to start Piglet. I know, and if you wanted it to look like it does five, ten years on, yeah. you know, it, it just doesn't. I thought that, but, like, getting something out there, and, you know, just starting to make sales, and starting to sort of iterate the business a little bit based on the feedback that you're receiving, is so good. And just be alright with the fact that it doesn't look like... That exactly is actually like a brilliant, a brilliant like. lesson. Because, because... Again, I'm sure it's particularly a female thing as well, where you really try and get every single detail right yeah. and, and make it perfect before doing it. Whereas actually, um, and I hope this isn't an awful thing to say, but I've, I, I've shared an office with me, um, male entrepreneurs and I've learned so much from male entrepreneurs and it's so fascinating the differences. And, and 
there's like my experience has been this is absolutely normal across mm -hmm. um, always true of course but um, I learned a lot about how I could just like get on with it sometimes yeah and just like get it out there see what happens as you say iterate learn from it um, and then go with it rather than sitting on it working it out trying yeah. to get it perfect and then going on and 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 I've I, I've always found it fascinating whenever I've sort of shared spaces with men running businesses and women running businesses they were much faster because they were just going for it and getting it and getting stuff wrong and being fine with getting it wrong um, whereas I think I'm probably not very good at getting it wrong I think we put a lot of our own <laughs> identities into the business as well so when something doesn't go so well or isn't well received it feels really personal yeah whereas you know I think there's another way of doing a business which is a little bit more kind of detached yeah 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 <laughs> and you know maybe that's a little bit easier to kind of move fast because you're not feeling so kind of like, it's like, and like it's a yeah, reflection of you. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Which I think is, I mean, I still definitely struggle with that because yeah. I think it is, it is such a big part of you. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and I think, I'm sure having a bigger team and, and, you know, all of those things, having people that are doing it, you know, I've had two maternity leaves, which means I've, I've had to step away. And actually, okay. that's been such a valuable thing that I had to go through because, of course, I had to let the business run on its own. And it's mm -hmm. a much better business for it because, you know, I, I understand the value I bring and I understand. How much better it is when I am in the business, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it, it's 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 sort of on me. Yeah. It's, me. Yeah. it's a living, breathing entity. You know, that's not just me. It's yeah. not just Emily. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much. It's been so fun to chat. It's been so nice. What a nice way to spend the morning. I know. In the company of our chickens. I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome, edition. Thank you for having me. Thank you.